Regret. We've all been there. Moments in our lives we wish we could take back. Decisions we'd make differently if given another chance. It's a feeling that can leave us stuck in the past, reliving our perceived failures. But what if there was a way to better manage these feelings and use them to move forward? Take J. Robert Oppenheimer, for instance. Known as the father of the atomic bomb, Oppenheimer led the Manhattan Project, which resulted in the creation of the first nuclear weapons during World War II. The use of these weapons led to unimaginable devastation and loss of life. Following this, Oppenheimer lived the rest of his life with deep regret about his role in this part of history. But how did he cope with such heavy regret? What can we learn from his experiences? If you've ever grappled with feelings of regret, this exploration might just provide you with the insights and tools you need to navigate this challenging emotion. So join us as we unpack Oppenheimer's life and his approach to coping with regret. Who was J. Robert Oppenheimer? J. Robert Oppenheimer was a renowned physicist, often referred to as the father of the atomic bomb, due to his role as the lead scientist on the Manhattan Project. His brilliant mind and leadership helped to bring together some of the brightest minds of his generation, resulting in the creation of one of the deadliest weapons in human history, the atomic bomb. But his remarkable achievement turned into a lifelong burden when the atomic bombs were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki towards the end of World War II, causing unparalleled destruction and the loss of hundreds of thousands of lives. The remorse and regret Oppenheimer felt in the aftermath of this catastrophe were profound. He is famously quoted as saying, Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. I suppose we all thought that one way or another. Expressing the deep remorse he felt, his life from that point on was marked by a deep-seated struggle with the moral implications of his work and the regret he carried. This struggle forms the crux of our exploration. Oppenheimer and Regret After the bombings, Oppenheimer was consumed with regret and remorse. He became a vocal advocate for the control of nuclear power and the peaceful use of atomic energy. He used his influence to promote discussions around the ethical implications of nuclear weapons, expressing his deep concerns for the future of humanity in the nuclear age. In dealing with his regret, Oppenheimer embarked on a path of atonement and advocacy. He repeatedly expressed his regret publicly, which can be seen as a form of self-reconciliation. His remorse led him to take actions aimed at preventing further misuse of the power he helped to unleash, dedicating the latter part of his life to advising on nuclear policy and advocating for international control of atomic energy. From Oppenheimer's actions, it can be inferred that he found some solace in using his regret as a fuel for change, using his unique position to try and shape the future of nuclear power and weapons. This introspection and action were his way of dealing with the enormous regret he carried with him. The Psychology of Regret Regret is a common emotion that arises when we believe our present situation could be better or happier if we had made different decisions in the past. It often involves feelings of disappointment or sorrow over something that has happened or been done, especially a loss or missed opportunity. From a psychological perspective, Regret is considered a self-conscious emotion. This means it's linked to our thoughts, decisions, and behaviors that we consciously recognize as leading to self-disappointment or self-blame. It often stems from our ability to reflect on our past, envision alternative outcomes, and compare them to our current reality. Regret can have both positive and negative impacts on our lives. On the negative side, persistent regret can lead to chronic stress, feelings of despair or helplessness, and even serious mental health issues like depression or anxiety. It can create a cycle of self-blame and rumination, which can impair our decision-making abilities, stifle our creativity, and hinder our personal growth. On the positive side, regret can serve as a useful learning tool. It can inform us about what matters most to us, guide us in decision-making, and motivate us to make amends or take corrective action, just like Oppenheimer did. Feelings of regret can encourage us to reflect on our choices, consider their consequences, and use this knowledge to guide our future actions. Neuroscientists have found that regret is associated with distinct neural circuits in the brain involving the prefrontal cortex, the hippocampus, 
and the amygdala, areas involved in decision-making, memory, and emotional processing. Interestingly, the same neural circuits are often activated when we anticipate regret in the future, suggesting that our brains can use past experiences of regret to help us make better decisions. While we cannot change our past, understanding the psychology of regret can provide us with strategies to cope with regret in healthier ways and use it as a catalyst for positive change. So the key lies in managing regret rather than eliminating it, which will be the focus of the next section. Dealing with regret is something that almost everyone has to go through at one point or another. Oppenheimer's experience with regret, which was deeply intertwined with his responsibility for creating weapons of mass destruction, led him to a path of reflection, acceptance, and advocacy for peace. This can provide us with some insights into how one can cope with profound regret. Firstly, acknowledge and accept regret. Denial or avoidance of regret often exacerbates feelings of guilt or disappointment. Like Oppenheimer, who openly acknowledged his regret, it's crucial to accept that regret is a natural response to situations where we believe our decisions have led to undesirable outcomes. Secondly, learn from regret. Regret can be a powerful teacher. For Oppenheimer, it fueled his determination to advocate for nuclear arms control. Each regretful situation offers a chance to learn and make adjustments for future actions. Thirdly, practice self-compassion. Blaming oneself for past mistakes can lead to a harmful cycle of negative self-talk. It's important to practice self-compassion and forgive oneself to make peace with the past. Fourthly, reevaluate and reframe. Regret. Instead of viewing regret as a negative emotion, reframe it as an opportunity for personal growth and learning. It's possible to reevaluate past decisions in light of the information and circumstances available at the time, which can often reduce feelings of regret. Lastly, seek professional help. When regret becomes overwhelming, it can be helpful to seek professional help, such as psychotherapy or counseling. Professionals can provide tools and techniques to help manage regret and other difficult emotions. By applying these strategies, we can turn regret from a paralyzing emotion into a powerful tool for learning, growth, and positive change. Just as Oppenheimer did, we can learn to cope with our regrets and use them to drive meaningful change in our lives. The Power of Acceptance Acceptance plays a crucial role in coping with regret. In the face of regret, it's natural to wish to undo past decisions or events, but this can lead to a continuous loop of self-blame and guilt, which is not beneficial to our mental health. Oppenheimer himself experienced this as he grappled with the devastating consequences of his work on the atomic bomb. He could not change the past, but he did have control over his present actions and future decisions. By accepting what he had done, he was able to focus his energy towards advocating for peace and nuclear disarmament. Acceptance is about acknowledging our past actions, the regrets associated with them, and realizing that they cannot be changed. This does not mean we approve or condone past mistakes or poor choices, but rather that we recognize they are part of our life's journey and have shaped us into who we are today. Moreover, acceptance helps us to learn valuable lessons from our regrets. It opens the door for self-reflection and growth, allowing us to make better decisions in the future. Acceptance can also free us from the burden of our past and provide the emotional space needed to move forward. In Oppenheimer's words, we knew the world would not be the same. His acceptance of the changed world and his role in it allowed him to redefine his purpose, turning his regret into a force for advocacy and peace. It's crucial to remember that while regret can feel heavy and all-consuming, it is indeed possible to cope with and even grow from it. Drawing from the life and experiences of J. Robert Oppenheimer, we have seen that even the most profound regret can be transformed into a force for positive change. Oppenheimer's life, though marked by significant regret, illustrates the power of acceptance, the importance of learning from our past, and the potential for personal growth. His story is a testament to our capacity to face our regrets, learn from them, and use them to drive change and growth in our own lives. Take to heart the strategies and perspectives we've discussed. Incorporate acceptance into your approach. Understand the psychology of regret to better cope with it. 
and use regret as a tool for self-reflection and personal growth. Remember, the goal isn't to live a life devoid of regret, but to learn how to cope with regret in a healthy, productive manner. Thank you for joining this journey into understanding regret through the lens of J. Robert Oppenheimer's life. May the lessons serve as guideposts as you navigate your own experiences of regret, helping you to turn regret into resilience.